Khan, the Primus of House Ico, the newest frontline to be brought into the game with OB69 and into competitive in OB70. Khan had a troubled release. He was released pretty underpowered, but after a few buffs, he's turned into a rather formidable frontline with a lot of potential power. However, he is still looked at as one of the weaker picks by the community, and he has the lowest win rate out of all the tanks right now, a minimal 42%. Why is this? Well, many simply just don't understand how to bring out Khan's potential power yet. Again, he's new, so that's understandable. It takes time to understand a new character, especially one who is very supportive and team-based. His power comes more from helping his teammates than anything else, as opposed to many other tanks who can do a lot on their own. This doesn't make Khan inferior to them though. It just requires players to learn and master a different playstyle in order to make Khan impactful, and trust me, Khan can be very impactful. What makes Khan impactful though? What are his strengths? His biggest is his Battle Shout. This grants him a brief moment of damage immunity and heals him and nearby allies for 800 health. By itself, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but with his firing line talent, it can also give him and his allies a 20% damage amp and a CC immunity for 4 seconds. This talent is so strong that it is the only one you should really be picking. We'll talk about why more in a minute, but first, let's go through his other strengths and his weaknesses. His commander's grab ability can be used to displace enemies, making them easy kills for you and your teammates. It can also be used to instantly cancel several barriers, limiting the overall need for Wrecker. His ultimate overpower is basically a free pick. You can either use it to throw a target off the map or into a hazard for an instant kill, or you can hold them there for 5 seconds for your teammates to kill them. Either way, they're dead, and there's nothing the target can do about it. He also has rather high sustain capabilities. His Shout and Bulwark can keep him alive for much longer than you'd expect from a 4000 HP tank. His Bulwark can also be raised and dropped at will as long as it isn't destroyed, since it has no cooldown. Now his weaknesses. Like I said, his HP is rather low. It's only 4000 base and he is a pretty big guy, so it's going to be hard to miss him. Thankfully, his sustained capabilities balance this out. His barrier also has no elevated protection. If an enemy is high enough above you, your barrier won't be protecting you at all, so be careful about that. Commander's Grab leaves you vulnerable for a short time while throwing an enemy, so you need to use it when you know you can't get bursted down during it. Overpower also leaves you vulnerable for as long as you hold the target. The ultimate makes you CC immune, but not damage immune. His Heavy Repeater has a relatively low range like how most tanks have, so you're going to be a bit of a sitting duck to long range enemies. So use the map to your advantage and break line of sight from those enemies while they're alive. Battle Shout also has low range, so in order to make use of his biggest strength, you must also get around his biggest weakness by staying close to your allies so you can buff them. Those are his strengths and his weaknesses. Now let's go more in depth with them. I'm going to explain how to make the most of Khan. First, like with any character, you need a proper loadout in order to make the most out of Khan. Khan has many good cards, but these are the ones I find the most impactful. Hope Guard adds to your overall sustain. Since your barrier can be put up and down at will, you can put it up every time you receive a heal, and Hope Guard will increase the healing you receive, allowing you to get back up to full faster. Life Taker allows you to use your abilities more often since the limbs will give you cooldown reduction. This is a must because it allows you to use your shout more often, and if you buff an ally with shout and they get a kill, it counts as an alim for you even if you didn't touch the enemy. Never Surrender is also a must because it lowers the base cooldown of your shout, allowing you to make more use of it more often as well. Never Surrender and Life Taker work beautifully together. Then there's Plate Mail that increases Khan's overall health and makes him bulkier and harder to kill. Those are his high impact cards you're going to want them in your loadout one way or another. This right here is what I use and what I personally recommend. Never Surrender and Life Taker are at max, so you can use Battle Shout as much as possible, as well as Commander's Grab of course, but Battle Shout is the big thing. The more you're shouting, the more you're buffing your allies, making them more powerful and harder to kill. You're also healing more and you're increasing your own damage more often and that allows you to build your ult faster. Hope Guard is at 3 and it basically gives you Rejuvenate 2 at the start of the game and you could of course stack it with Rejuvenate as well to receive even more healing. The card itself also affects out of combat healing, so if you're healing out of combat you can put up your barrier to make it go by a bit faster, acting as veteran as well in a way. 
Then Plate Mail is at 1 as a filler. It's a good card, but I don't personally hold it over the other three, so it gets used as a filler by me. 150 more HP may not seem like a whole lot, but it can help out pretty often. I also have Open Fire at level 1 as another filler. Since you'll be shouting so often, you'll be able to use the 4 extra ammo more often as well. Ammo cards are often good fillers. Now again, that's what I run. Feel free to run something to your personal liking. I just highly recommend those high impact cards I mentioned. There's also in-game items. As far as the red items go, you want to be picking up Cauterize on Khan. He isn't horrible at Wrecker, but you only want him on Wrecker if there's no other good Wrecker options, which is incredibly rare. For yellow items, morale boost is what you want to be going with. With the Shout Spam build, you don't really need Kronos, and your ult is very powerful, so you want to have it up a lot. For green items, there's Rejuvenate, the only green item tanks should ever be getting. The blue items are situational. Since you have CC immunity, resilience isn't really a must, unless they have that much CC on the enemy team. You're not going to be able to block it all, so resilience can help you out with that. So you can focus on using your Shout to block CC that's more impactful to your team, like a Nara alt or her warder's field, and let resilience deal with stuff like Grumpy Bomb stun. Haven and Blast shields are of course good depending on the comp if you don't need Resil, then Illuminate. Well, you know what that's for, and you're probably never really going to need it, especially since you can alt invis targets just by mashing the button in their direction. Now, what order do you buy this stuff in? Well, for comps with good sustain, like main healers or multiple sources of healing, you of course want to rush Cot. With low sustain comps, like let's say a single Luminary Genos, you can first buy Rejuvenate or Morale Boost if your teammates get enough Cot, and depending on what healers you have. If you have a Ceres or a Maldamba to pump healing into you in that situation, you can go Morale Boost over Rejuve at the start. If you have Ying, then you probably want to first buy Rejuve, but again, in most situations you're starting off with Cot, then getting Rejuve or Morale depending on your healing situation. Now that you know how to build Khan, let's get into what you'll be doing in-game. So tanks in general have a few things you want to focus on doing. You're the forefront of your team, so you need to both make space for your DPS to do their job, while also protecting them and leaving no openings for your enemies to get to them. This is a big thing about having two tanks. Being able to manage protecting and making space for your team is crucial for a tank, because one may become more important than the other depending on the situation, and the situation can change on the drop of a dime. So let's look at some examples of protecting and making space for your team. This game is on Splitstone. I respawned and I'm on my way back while Makoa is spawning up. Since he's still spawning, I'm the only tank up and my teammates are split. Drogos and Genos on one side, Andro on the other. I'm looking to see who is going to need my immediate help. I see Andro start to take damage, so I go right. I immediately put myself in between Andro and the Pip and the Grover. I shout, healing Andro up and buffing him so he can push these two with me. We go on the pip, get the easy kill, and push on the retreating Grover. Enemy team has no healing now. Victor is up and behind us, but I don't want to divert all our resources to one Victor because it'll leave us vulnerable to the incoming enemies. I take the building to put myself in between my team and the enemy, while looking to make sure somebody is watching for the Vic. Anara comes up on me, but I'm in no danger from a sneak attack since I have my shout up and I have a lot of health. I put myself in between her and the doorway and stand my ground. It's only her, so I know I'll be fine and I want to keep her away from my team so they can easily kill the straggling enemies. Drogos makes quick work of the lone Ruckus, and Makoa takes out the Vic. Grover comes in to help Inara, but I'm still in no immediate trouble. These two can't take me out fast enough to make a difference, and at this point, I've bought so much time for my team to get picks. Andro even manages to take out Pip on the high ground since he has no help. Now I'm starting to look like I'm in trouble, but it doesn't matter because there's nothing stopping my team from coming to my aid now that I've made it easy for them to kill the other three. Grover gets completely out of position. I start to chase him, but I notice Makoa is as well and I don't want to waste resources by having both tanks attack a target that has no chance of surviving. I turn back to the payload and make sure my DPS and support aren't left alone, confident that Makoa will pick up the kill. Thankfully I did because I'm able to put myself in between Ruckus and Geno so he can't advance on him. Andro's behind him, and Makoa comes back as well after picking up the kill, so this Ruckus is an easy pick. Now we're at the part of the push where Vic and Grover can easily free fire down the lane, since we don't have any range to contest them. We need a tank on the payload to push it safely. Makoa tells me he's going up right, so I keep myself on the payload, tanking Vic's fire as much as I can. Anara comes in on me, and I divert my attention. I can fight her safely since Vic doesn't have a line of sight on me here, and Andro jumps on him, easily picking up the kill. 
Anara walls herself off, but that's okay, I put my focus back on pushing. Makoa has the right side high ground, and Andro has the left side covered with Drogos. I want to stay in mid to make sure nothing can push in on my Genos. Anara is quickly killed by my DPSs, and Pip and Ruckus fall victim to some ultimates. The alts themselves weren't really needed since Pip and Ruckus would have easily died anyway since we had superior numbers, but the focus here is the Khan play obviously. What matters is that I used what Khan has at his disposal to both protect and make space for my team, and secure this push. It's also very important to know when to use your shout and your alt. As far as your shout goes, you need to be close to allies to use it, so you always want to be close to as many of your teammates as possible. Khan isn't one of those tanks that can go off on their own and still be an intimidating presence. He's at his most intimidating while he's with allies, making them stronger and helping them secure kills. Ideally, you want to be able to make the most out of everything it offers as often as possible, but there are times where you're only going to use it to make use of one of its buffs, whether it be the damage immunity, healing, CC immunity, or damage amp. The main rule about using your shout is you want to make sure you have it for the things that could completely change the team fight. Like let's say there's an Anara or a Ceres on the other team. If you know these two have ults, you want to save your shout for them. One of these two things is going to happen. Either they're going to use it and you're going to block it since you have your shout ready, or they're going to hold on to it too long while waiting for you to use your shout, and they're going to die with it. Either way you benefit greatly from having that shout saved. The only time I'd say it's okay to break this rule is if you need it to keep yourself alive, because your team is way worse off with you dead than you alive without a shout. When there isn't something like that to hold your shout for if those things have already been used, then you can use your shout more sparingly. It's okay in that case to use it for the damage immunity, heal, or damage amp. Like if you have something like a friendly Makoa, Ruckus, or Tyra ulting, you can toss them that buff to make their ult that much more powerful. As long as it counts as a weapon attack, it'll receive the buff. Now for some actual in-game examples. You saw some earlier, like when I went to help Andro and I used both the healing and the damage lamp to help secure kills on the supports, but let's cover a few more so you have this down. A well-timed shout can sway the course of the game and there's really no limit to the value it can bring your team. Like right here, I'm able to stop an Inara Cripple, Terminus Stun, and Maldamba Alt with one button press. That's an ultimate and two high impact abilities completely nullified. That is Onslaught, but I just wanted to show you Shout's potential. Let's get into some real examples. Here on Icebinds, Anara is still up, and it's been a bit since I've seen her use her cripple. I see her moving in on my retreating Makoa and a weak Maldamba. I move in and get the Shout off when the cripple goes down, freeing them, healing Maldamba, and amping Makoa and myself to burst down the Anara and force her back. Later in this game, I'm on the right side looking to get my alt off on one of the enemy DPSs, since they both have alts up and they've been the main problem for my team in this game. I move up on the right side and I hear Victor starting to alt me. I want him to use it up on me instead of hiding from him and him turning around and using it on my teammates on the point. I get in his line of sight and shout to eat up some of the rockets and I'm even able to negate a not result at the same time. I got them to waste two alts and that's huge. I'm also able to stay alive and get my alt off. I wanted Pip because he still had an alt, but I ended up getting Victor. It's still one of the DPS's like I wanted, so oh well. In this Stonekeep game, I stumbled upon an alting Drogos. I start attacking him to get him low, and I shout to keep myself alive long enough to give my amped buck enough time to kill Drogos and save me. Then in a different Stonekeep game, there's this sequence. On Stonekeep, high ground is more important and the fight for it is in a pretty tight space. So we're gonna be all grouped up. Normally this would be good for them because they have Anara Cripple, Anara Alt, Damba Alt, and Eevee Alt. So it would normally be an easy team fight win for them, but Khan says no. Since we're grouped up, I can easily negate Anara's Alt and amp my team. Unfortunately, a flanking Fernando forces my team's attention, so he can't make quick work of Anara with the amps. I do my best to stay alive with my barrier, and Makoa puts up his as well so I can retreat into it. Fernando's barrier goes up and I break it and toss him behind me into my team. I put my barrier back up so Maldamba and Inara can't help him and my team makes quick work of Fernando. With only Inara and Damba left, I amp, heal, and CC cleanse my team, so we can run right through the cripple and burst down Inara and Damba, bringing back a team fight that looked lost. I also want you guys to see this. If you hear a BK alting, you can run up to him, shout, and his alt will detonate on impact with you, and you won't take any damage or be stunned. BK will also likely be out of position after this and be an easy pick. Now let's go over his ultimate. Overpower is one of the strongest alts in the game. 
With a single button press, any target you pick can be brought to you and your team and be helplessly held in your grasp for 5 seconds. There are two main ways of using this ultimate. You can alt a target and throw them into a hazard or off the map for an instant kill. If you're throwing them into a hazard, it's pretty straightforward. They will die. However, throwing them off the map could be risky. Some characters will be able to get back onto the map, like Drogos or Ruckus. If you want to instant kill these kind of enemies by throwing them off the map, you need to be on the very edge of the map and throw them downward so they hit the kill box, instead of throwing them straight outside of the map. You can also alt a target and hold them for your team to kill them. 5 seconds is more than enough time for your team to kill any target. It also gives them ultimate charge while throwing the enemy off the map does not. Like, look right here. I alt Fernando and go to toss him off the map, but then I notice that BK and Lex don't have their alts. So I let them kill the Fernando to get that extra percentage. Most of the time I recommend using this method, but sometimes it isn't safe to hold them and sometimes you just need that instant kill, so throwing them off the map or into a hazard is better in those situations. Picking who to alt is also a big thing. It's basically a free pick, so try to pick the most problematic enemy target to use it on. Like earlier when I wanted the Victor or the Pip because they were much more of a hassle than the tanks or the support, and they both had alts that I can't completely save my team from. In theory, it does make sense to get a tank out of the way since they have the bigger health pools, but if neither of the tanks are problematic targets, then they're not worth using the alt on. More often than not, the healer is actually more valuable, because without the healer, the tanks are just big alt chargers for your team, basically. The range on your alt can also make it very easy to pull in supports from the enemy backline. Now, when to alt is a big thing too. You don't want to just stand in the open and alt, because while you're holding somebody, you're defenseless, so the enemy team can easily team shot you and free their teammate. You want to be sure that you're alting somewhere where you can't be easily team shot. Plus, if you plan on holding a target for your enemy to kill, you'll likely be standing still so they can hit them, so you definitely don't want to be caught out in the open. Now, there is one other way you can use your ult, but this situation happens less often. Right here, Ruckus is the only one who's up, but he's far away and can easily dash to the side to get behind cover and wait for his team. So what I do is I ult him when he's low, mainly to keep him from retreating. I don't even get to fully pull him in, but because of that we get to stagger and I keep 30% of my ult since he wasn't put in my grasp. Alts like this aren't a bad idea either, because like I said, you get the pick and you even keep some of your ultimate. Again, this isn't going to happen very often, but I want to point it out. Similarly, somebody could be retreating like a Genos, and you can alt them and pull them in to get the stagger. Even if you don't end up getting the 30% back, that's okay too. So to wrap this all up, Khan is a very team supportive tank. He benefits the most when he's benefiting his allies. You need to use teamwork to make the most of him, but when you do, he is very impactful and very powerful. I know in public games, coordination isn't super common, but you don't need a ton of it to make Khan work. In my experience, just the basics of team play is good enough to get the high value out of him. Any more than that, well that just makes him that much stronger. Now that I've shown you guys how to play Khan, I'm going to make separate videos going over how to play around Khan when he's on your team, and how to counter him if he's on the enemy team. So look forward to those. And that's pretty much it guys, I want to thank you all for watching, I very much appreciate it, and I'm going to see you guys later. Bye! You go towards the point, and you go pew 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 pew! And more pew 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 pew, but then they start the pew pew back, and so you put up the shield, and you you, you gotta try to protect all those small people behind you because they can't do shit, and so <laughs> oh no, it's an Anar oh Super Saiyan shout! <laughs> and then we're pew 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 because you're fine. You got that CC immunity, and so pew pew pew. Pew, pew. And they're dead. <laughs> yeah, that's about all I got. <laughs>